There is no doubt INFJs are ideal friends. With their loyalty, empathy, and compassion, there is no reason for anyone to dislike them. But why have they never been someone's most favorite friend? Here are 10 reasons why. Number 10. They are highly empathic. This is undoubtedly the most obvious trait demonstrating the INFJ's unparalleled loyalty to their friends. No one can question a true INFJ when it comes to empathy. Their unrivaled loyalty stems from their ability to communicate, reciprocate, engage, and connect. These abilities are not available to the general public. However, when their friends experience all these efforts from an INFJ, they will think they are too good to be true. This is perhaps because the INFJ's compassionate efforts are uncomfortable for those who have never been treated as nicely. It may also be because the INFJ's empathy makes people always feel listened to, observed, and analyzed to the point that they feel overwhelmed. Yes, this profound empathy sometimes makes the INFJ's friends anxious in a way that pressures them to be as kind and empathic as them. Number 9. They are honest and their friends don't like it. INFJs are the most loyal friends because they are 100% honest about these people regardless of how it makes them feel. Someone's ability to lie is a deal breaker to INFJs. They will not do that to anyone, not even those they despise. They would rather be fired for being brutally honest than for being a liar. Loyal people like INFJs will not tell white lies to impress others or protect their reputations. They will spit them out no matter how bitter the truth is. They will bravely expose it no matter how embarrassing it is. So, they give the impression of being careless and rude. They give their friends the impression that they are insensitive and don't care about their feelings. This is why they are their peers' least favorite. These people resent INFJs for being so candid and real. But as an INFJ, do you think this is unfair for someone who only intends to be honest? Number 8. They value their and others' boundaries. Sadly, the INFJ's boundaries don't work well in some friendships. It doesn't work well with most people. Why? Because it can come off as selfishness and dismissiveness. Someone is very loyal if they understand and respect the value of boundaries. Boundaries help INFJs persevere their relationship's health by recognizing each other's emotional needs. Thus, it allows INFJs to maintain their sense of personal space and identity even when they are with others. This is why they always appreciate their partner's beliefs, principles, and values, even if they differ from their own. And yes, they also apply the same boundaries with their friends. When a friend crosses their line, INFJs will instantly call them out. When a friend intrudes on their zone, INFJs will instantly change the mood of the friendship until that friend apologizes. Number 7. They allow their friends to count on them anytime. The INFJ's friends enjoy relying on them because when the INFJ says they will do a favor, they will do it well. When they say their friends can count on them, they take full responsibility for the task. It's not about being a slave. It's about doing the right thing extraordinarily, even if no one asks them to. They take the initiative to carry out their plans and commitments even when their friends do not. And this is where the problem enters. Even when their friends hardly reciprocate, they will still do them a favor. The INFJ's level of dependability in their daily life demonstrates how loyal and ideal friends they make. But are their friends willing to do the same? Number 6. They hold their friends accountable for their behaviors. Most people hate being held accountable for their problematic behaviors. 
They just want to take everything easy and escape from their actions' consequences. But given how rigid the INFJ's morals are, they tend to suffocate their friends with confrontations. They tend to scare their friends away by refusing to tolerate their repetitive mistakes. When their friend talks behind their back, the INFJ will confront them about it, which is very unpleasing for their friends. So, it would make more sense if these people avoided the INFJ rather than gravitating toward them. It will make more sense if these people view INFJs as the least favorite friend rather than the favorite one. Number 5. They are focused on nurturing their well-being. The thing about being focused on nurturing their well-being is that INFJs become more nurturing toward others. The more they recharge and isolate, the more they become good friends. Taking care of themselves first helps them care for their loved ones even better. Growth helps INFJs become better people and improve their relationships. So, they reasoned that if they couldn't focus on and love themselves, they couldn't possibly love others. INFJs like passengers on airplanes put on their oxygen masks before assisting others. When people are loyal to themselves, they can do the same in their relationships. This is why INFJs can be the most loyal friends one can ever meet. Sadly, their tendency to prioritize their well-being makes them their friend's least favorite. Everyone wants an active and involved companion, and INFJs can't be consistent with that. As an INFJ, does this mean you don't feel guilty about being unavailable when you want to be? Number 4. They are too forgiving Because of their ability to forgive, INFJs are loyal in their friendships. They don't hold grudges over past issues because doing so will only erode their friendship bond. They let go of the pain, refocus on their progress, and accept apologies. But INFJs are too forgiving to the point that their friends will no longer strive to be better. They are too forgiving that their loved ones will be tempted to overlook their importance and take them for granted. So, how are INFJs coping with this? How do they manage this unconscious treatment in their friendships? They can move on from what others said or did but they will not allow themselves to relieve the trauma and sadness. The healing process is a long one, and the last thing they want to do is squander it by reopening their hearts to toxic friendships. Number 3. They easily let go of purposeless relationships. The INFJ's friends would surely resent them for being able to give up on their friendship so easily. These people don't understand how much INFJs value their inner peace. They can't understand they, this is why INFJs quickly cut ties with anyone, even their closest friends, in order to regain their sanity and be happier. People think INFJs are selfish for giving up on relationships with great potential, but for the INFJ, it's reasonable to let go of things that don't work. While most people hold on to goals and relationships because they have potential, INFJs see them for what they are. It's not a lack of determination or commitment, it's a desire to save time and energy for more important things. But how do you deal with the immense grief that comes with ending friendships as an INFJ? Number 2. They let their hearts out. INFJs rarely have friends, so they thought they, if they would ever have one, they would be fully immersed and committed to the friendship. With the INFJs' selflessness, it's no surprise that their hearts sometimes think for them. They put others' needs first, not because they are submissive codependents, but because they are naturally good people. Even if some people believe they are rude, cold and inconsiderate, the opposite is true for those they love. When they gain the INFJ's trust, 
they will be surprised at how far they will go. INFJs focus on their friends' feelings by constantly checking in to ensure they are doing well. If not, they will do anything to constantly make them feel safe, valued, and heard. Sadly, this is also why they are not someone's favorite friend. Some people have attachment issues that they find the INFJ's ability to be emotionally vulnerable and expressive overwhelming. Number 1. They are fine with being alone. The INFJ is not everyone's favorite friend because they aren't desperate to be friends with anyone anyway. They aren't manipulating anyone to love or value them. They aren't modifying their character just to increase their worth in people's eyes. The thing about INFJs is that they are not afraid to be alone. They are fine with being the outcast in their group of friends and it doesn't make them feel insecure at all. In return, their friends also won't bother entertaining or hanging out with them. Their friends won't mind continuously ignoring them because the INFJ is okay with it anyway. INFJs have gotten so used to being alone that they no longer need friends to count on in times of need. As an INFJ, is this a good or bad thing? INFJs don't intend to hurt their friends when doing the right thing. However, they also believe it's not their role to adjust their values based on what pleases others. As an INFJ, does this make you a bad friend? Do you think it's unfair for your friends to ignore your value in their life?